Welcome to Personal Trainer Cooking. Before we go any further, please adjust my voice to the speed you like. Is this a good speed for you? Getting ready. Don't touch the power button. You're ready to start cooking tasty dishes from all over the world. Personal Trainer. Cooking. Hello. Let's get cooking. Let's get started. The first step is to slice the ingredients. You'll need a cutting board and a kitchen knife. First, remove the stems from each tomato. Have them lengthwise and cut them into half moon slices around one quarter inch thick. Cut the mozzarella into slices around one quarter inch thick, the same thickness as the tomato slices. That's it for preparations. You'll need a serving dish to arrange the ingredients. Arrange alternate slices of tomato and mozzarella on the serving dish. Sprinkle small pieces of basil over the salad. Cover it with plastic wrap and refrigerate to chill before serving. Next, prepare a mixing bowl to make the dressing in. Put some salt and the balsamic vinegar in the bowl and mix them together well. Add the extra virgin olive oil a little at a time and mix it in thoroughly. Pour the dressing over the chilled salad and add coarsely ground black pepper to taste. It's ready to eat. Well done. All right, let's get started. The first step is to chop the ingredients. You'll need a cutting board and a kitchen knife. First, peel the potatoes. Dice the peeled potatoes into one half inch cubes. Next, peel the onions. Finally, chop the peeled onions. Now, peel the carrots. Dice the peeled carrots into one quarter inch cubes. Cut the bacon into one half inch squares. That's it for preparations. The next step is to cook the ingredients. You'll need a saucepan. Melt the butter in the saucepan over moderate heat. Add the chopped onion and saute until transparent. Add the bacon and fry it briefly, mixing it in with the onion. Add the carrot cubes and saute them until tender. Now add the potato cubes and lightly saute them. 
Next, add the stock. Finally, add the bay leaves. Put on the lid and bring the soup to a boil before turning to low heat and simmering for approximately 20 minutes. Season with salt, pepper, and nutmeg to taste. Transfer to serving bowls and sprinkle on some finely chopped parsley. It's ready to eat. Well done. Let's get started. The first step is to cut the broccoli and ginger. You'll need a cutting board and a kitchen knife. Cut the broccoli into florets. Next, peel the ginger. Thinly slice the peeled ginger. Try to cut the slices as thinly as possible. The next step is to make the sweetened vinegar. You'll need a small bowl. Put the rice vinegar and the water into the small bowl. Add the sugar and the salt, stirring well. Next, you'll need a sieve and a saucepan to boil the ginger briefly. Bring some water to a boil in the saucepan. Briefly boil the thinly sliced ginger, then transfer it to the sieve. Drain off the water from the boiled ginger, then transfer it to the bowl to soak it in the sweetened vinegar. The next step is to boil the broccoli. You'll need a saucepan and a sieve. Bring plenty of water to a boil in the saucepan. Add a pinch of salt, then boil the broccoli until it turns a bright color. Transfer the broccoli to the sieve and drain off the water. Next, have a mixing bowl and sieve ready to prepare the tuna. Transfer the tuna from the can to the sieve. Drain off the liquid and break the tuna into small pieces. Now prepare another small bowl to make the sushi vinegar in. Put the rice vinegar and the sugar into a separate small bowl. Add the salt and stir well. Retrieve the ginger from the sweetened vinegar and squeeze the liquid off gently. That's it for preparations. Now it's time to make the sushi rice. You'll need a mixing bowl, a flat rice paddle and a fan. Put the hot rice in the mixing bowl. Gradually add small amounts of the sushi vinegar to the rice and quickly mix it in using the flat rice paddle. Mix the rice with the rice paddle using a cutting motion, cooling the rice with the fan at the same time. Mix the mayonnaise into the rice and sushi vinegar mixture. Add the tuna to the sushi rice and mix it in. Transfer the sushi rice mixed with tuna to serving dishes and place the broccoli on top. Garnish with the pickled ginger. It's ready to eat. Nice work.
All right, let's get started. The first step is to cut the ingredients. You'll need a cutting board and a kitchen knife. First, peel the onion. Finally, chop the peeled onion. Next, peel the garlic. Finally, chop the peeled garlic. Cut the bacon into one quarter inch squares. Remove the frozen pastry sheets from the freezer and allow them to defrost. That's it for preparations. The next step is to cook the vegetables, ground meat, and bacon. You'll need a frying pan, a dish, and plastic wrap. Melt the butter in the frying pan over low heat. Saute the finely chopped onion and garlic over moderate heat. Add a pinch of salt and continue to saute the garlic and onion until tender. Next, add the ground meat and the bacon. Then fry until the meat is broken up and no lumps remain. Add the flour and cook until it's fully mixed in with the other ingredients. Now add the stock and the tomato ketchup. Add the bay leaves, then bring the stock to a brief boil and skim off the foam. Reduce to low heat and simmer for about 15 minutes until almost all the liquid has evaporated. Stir the bottom of the pan to keep it from burning. Season to taste with salt and pepper. Then turn off the heat and remove the pan from the stove. Transfer the cooked filling to the dish and allow it to cool. Cover the dish in plastic wrap, place it in the fridge, chill it thoroughly. If the filling is still warm, it will melt the butter in the pastry and spoil the pie's taste. Now preheat the oven to 400 degrees. To roll out the pastry sheets, you'll need a cutting board and a rolling pin. Dust the cutting board and the rolling pin with flour. Lay out the pastry sheets and dust them with flour as well. Use the rolling pin to roll out the pastry very thin. One eighth of an inch is ideal. The next step is to make the pies. You'll need oven safe dishes and a pastry brush. Put the chilled filling into the oven safe dishes, smoothing the tops flat. Use the pastry brush to coat the top of the filling and the edges of the oven safe dishes with beaten egg. Cut the pastry into circles, slightly larger in diameter than the oven safe dishes. Cover each oven safe dish with a pastry circle. Press down on the pastry with your fingers so that it sticks to both the filling and the dishes. Use the pastry brush to coat the top of the pastry for each pie with beaten egg. Place the dishes in the preheated 400 degree oven. Bake for around 10 minutes until golden brown. Once the meat pies are baked, divide into servings. They're ready to eat. Well done. Let's get started. The first step is to prepare the ingredients. You'll need a cutting board, a kitchen knife, and a mixing bowl. First, peel the red onion. Thinly slice the peeled red onion. Next, peel the garlic. Finally, chop the peeled garlic. Remove the seeds from the red chili. Once the seeds have been removed, cut the red chili into thin rings. 
thinly slice the celery. Cut the unpeeled sweet potato into round slices, one half inch thick. Put some water in the bowl and soak the sweet potato. Next, chop the tuna into three quarter inch cubes. Devein the prawns. That's it for preparations. The next step is to boil the octopus and the prawns. You'll need a saucepan, a mixing bowl, a dish, and paper towels. Fill the bowl with cold water. Line the dish with paper towels to absorb excess water later. Boil some water in the saucepan. Put the octopus tentacles and prawns into the boiling water. The octopus tentacles should boil only briefly. Quickly remove the octopus tentacles from the saucepan and put them into the cold water. Once the prawns are cooked, remove them from the pan and put them into the bowl of cold water with the octopus tentacles. Once the octopus tentacles and prawns have cooled, place them onto the paper towels to absorb any excess water. Peel the boiled prawns, then remove and discard the tails. Cut the peeled prawns in half lengthwise. This can be tricky, so go slowly and be careful. Thinly slice the octopus tentacles diagonally. Next, have a mixing bowl ready to make the dressing. Put the finely chopped garlic and the red chili rings into the bowl. Add the lemon juice and stir. Next, add the tuna, prawns and octopus to the bowl with the dressing you've just made. Now add the red onion and celery. Mix everything together and season to taste with salt. Let it stand for approximately 30 minutes to allow the flavors to blend. The next step is to boil the sweet potato. You'll need a saucepan. Fill the saucepan with water, put in the sweet potato, and boil it over moderate heat for 15 minutes. Use a mesh skimming ladle to take out the sweet potato and drain off the water. When a skewer pierces the slices easily, they're ready. Tear the romaine lettuce leaves into easy-to-eat pieces. Place the romaine lettuce on the serving dishes and pile the dressed seafood on top. Arrange with the boiled sweet potato, then garnish with Italian parsley. It's ready to eat! Well done! Let's get started. The first step is to chop the garlic. You'll need a cutting board and a kitchen knife. Peel the garlic. Finely chop the garlic. Chop about one half inch off the ends of the bean sprouts. Now wash the bean sprouts. You'll need a mixing bowl. Fill the bowl with water, rinse the bean sprouts, then shake off any excess water. The next step is to boil the bean sprouts. You'll need a saucepan and a sieve. Fill the saucepan with water and bring it to a boil. Put the bean sprouts in the pan, boil them briefly, then use the sieve to drain off excess water. Now it's time to prepare the seasoning. You'll need a mixing bowl. Put the rice vinegar and the sugar in the bowl. Add the salt and the chili powder and mix well. That's it for preparations. The next step is to saute the bean sprouts. You'll need a frying pan and cooking chopsticks. Put the frying pan over moderate heat and pour in the sesame oil. Add the garlic and saute until fragrant. Next, add the bean sprouts and saute them until they're completely coated in oil. While they're still hot, put the bean sprouts in the mixing bowl with the seasoning. Stir until the bean sprouts are seasoned all over. 
They're ready to eat. Well done. Let's get started. The first step is to prepare the ingredients. You'll need a cutting board and a kitchen knife. Peel the onion. Thinly slice the peeled onion. Remove and discard the seeds and stems from the small red peppers. Next, cut the small red peppers into thin strips. Cut the beef into strips and sprinkle with salt and pepper to season. That's it for preparations. The next step is to cook the ingredients. You'll need a frying pan. Put the olive oil into the frying pan and place over moderate heat. Saute the seasoned beef until browned. Add the onion and red pepper and saute until they become tender. Add some salt, pepper and a pinch of thyme and stir them in. Then turn off the heat and remove the pan from the stove. Tear the lettuce and place some on each tortilla. Divide the fried beef and vegetables into portions. Then place a portion in the center of each tortilla and fold in half. Skewer the tortillas with a toothpick to keep them folded. Transfer the tortillas to plates and garnish with Italian parsley. Serve with chili sauce. They're ready to eat. Nice work. Let's get going. The first step is to dissolve the auger powder. You'll need a saucepan. First, put the water and the auger powder into the saucepan. Mix gently over low heat. Once the auger powder has fully dissolved, turn off the heat and remove the pan from the stove. Next, have a mixing bowl ready to mix the ingredients together. Put the almond powder and the sugar into the mixing bowl. Add the milk and mix it in thoroughly. That's it for preparations. Add the mixture of milk, sugar and almond powder to the dissolved auger in the saucepan. Put the saucepan over low heat. Keep the saucepan over low heat and just before it boils, remove it from the stove and turn off the heat. The next step is to strain the auger mixture. You'll need a tea strainer and a mixing bowl. Strain the dissolved auger mixture through the tea strainer into the bowl. The next step is to let the mixture set. You'll need one small bowl per serving and plastic wrap. Pour the auger mixture into the bowls. Allow it to cool before covering it with plastic wrap. Put the bowls in the fridge to set for around 25 minutes. Next, cut the apricots and the almond jelly. You'll need a cutting board and a kitchen knife. Thinly slice the canned apricots. Without removing it from the bowls, slice the almond jelly with a number of diagonal cuts. Pour the leftover syrup from the canned apricots over the almond jelly. Garnish with the sliced apricot. It's ready to eat. 
Well done.